Casey Gray here from The Conscious Builder, and on today's video, we're gonna share the cost of switching from natural gas to an all-electric home based on a project that we did for one of our clients. We'll also share some different ways to approach a project like this, so be sure to stick around until the end. And before we get into the cost and you meet our homeowner, Simon, and his reasons and learn about his reasons for doing this project, I do want to point out that you should make sure that you have goals and that you're very clear on how you can accomplish those goals for your project. For example, if you are aiming to have a fossil fuel free home, but you live somewhere where the power grid is very dirty, i.e. it's made with coal or the electricity is made with coal or fossil fuels, then by getting your home off of natural gas, that does not necessarily accomplish your goal of reducing your carbon footprint. You're, sh you're simply just shifting that energy source from one place to another and you actually I would say added more to the planet by bringing in this equipment that maybe you didn't need in the first place. So you would then need to add something else to it like solar panels, for example. So all, all this to be said is that it just make sure that you know what your goals are, you're clear on them, and you're clear on how you can actually accomplish those. Now, not everybody is going to make decisions based on lowering their carbon footprint, and I'm aware of that, and I'll talk a little bit about that at the end. Our client Simon had a 1900s two-story single family home that required significant renovations. Additionally, the furnace was at the end of its life. In a previous video, we covered this project in more detail, which you can check out in the video description below. But in this video, we'll only focus on the direct cost of switching from natural gas to all electric. Simon shared his family's energy usage before the retrofit and conversion from February 2019 to February 2020, which was two adults and two kids. Their electricity consumption for the period was 7,910 kilowatt hours, which cost $1,213.82 and powered their air conditioner, electric stovetop, oven, fridge, lights, and other plug loads. Their natural gas consumption was 2,530 cubic meters, which cost them $1,079.65 and powered just their furnace and their hot water tank. The total utility cost for the year was then $2,293.47. Now let's take a closer look at Simon's costs to install the equipment, supply and install the equipment. But keep in mind that this was part of a much larger project and that this work was done about two years ago in terms of when we did the physical work. So prices have changed since then. The heat pump we installed was a Mitsubishi Zuba Central, which includes the air handler and an eight kilowatt electric backup heater. The cost was 16,450, but on average these days, you're looking at around 20,000. We also installed a Rheem air source heat pump hot water tank, which cost 5,680, and a Life Breath ERV, which cost 4,760. And all of these costs are before any grants were applied. So the total cost for Simon was 26,890 for these portions of the project. However, with the grants, at least today, you can get about six grand back. So it depends on where you're living and what the grants are and if there even is anything available. But in this case, there is where we are in Canada. The other thing that you'll need to factor in if you are going to go all electric is that you might need to upgrade your service and your panel, meaning that if you have a 100 amp service and you need to go up to a 200 amp service and upgrade your panel, that could run you about five grand, could be more, but you'll wanna to talk to your electrician about that and make sure that you include these costs in your project. After construction from February 2022 to February 2023, their electricity consumption was 16,130 kilowatt hours, which cost $2,330.51, almost identical to their previous consumption. However, considering the significant increase in natural gas prices, a gas consumer would pay more now for the same level of consumption than they did back in 2019 and 2020. You're not going to do a straight swap just to save, you know, uh, 50 bucks a month or whatever on your on your electricity bill. I think long term, it's going to be a much bigger figure, right? By the time you get to a carbon price of $170 a ton in 2030, you know, a good portion of your gas bill is going to be carbon price. Um, never mind the, you know, the, the vagaries of the world market, right? Like we, we generate our electricity here in Ontario, largely from nuclear and then hydropower and a bit of gas. So it's a pretty stable price. 
whereas the price of natural gas is set by world markets, right? So where Russia invades Ukraine, suddenly the price of natural gas is going up and that's what consumers here pay. So we're a little isolated from, from world events as well. But that's a very long-term view, right? To, to sort of say, I want to spend 30, 40 grand on new equipment so to be disconnected from geopolitics. Very strange kind of way to think about buying your heating equipment. All right, now in Canada, we have what's called a carbon tax, and that is a federally imposed tax that its goal is to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. And what that is, is in 2022, for every ton of CO2 burned, then you get charged an extra $50. And the goal is for that to go all the way up to $170 per ton. What the government also did is start the Climate Action Incentive Payment. In 2022, an individual receives $488, a spouse receives $244, and you receive $122 per child. So that would be a total of $976 for a family of four like Simon and his family. Based on the $15 per ton increase per year, this brings the Climate Action Incentive Payment to $2,424 by 2030. So yes, just to be clear, they are charging us more for natural gas through the carbon tax and then giving us some money back. So the incentive really lies in getting off of natural gas and simply collecting the climate action incentive payment. But this means this family of four should collect a total of $13,723 between now and 2030. And if you add up the carbon tax on the natural gas charge from Simon's house over the eight years, it totals $4,423. These two numbers added together give you $18,146. And once you factor in the grants you can receive, you almost pay off the HVAC system within eight years years which is a very good roi now i think going this route of the heat pump technology for example becomes a lot more realistic for a lot of homeowners as their furnaces or their hot water tanks are coming to the end of their life because as we buy more and more heat pumps the technology will become cheaper and cheaper natural gas is continuing to soar right so that will likely outpace with all these carbon taxes at least where we are the raise in electricity costs so from a long-term perspective it starts to make a lot of financial sense now simon will also talk about the fact that he did all these other upgrades to improve the comfort and health of his home and that is also something that you just can't put a price on you know with additional air sealing and kind of insulation on the house as well as changing the equipment where we're now uh, i'd say much more even for temperature and so on um, and you know generally much more comfortable we set our thermostat higher than we probably would before um, and yet the whole the whole affair is about the same cost to run now, if reducing your carbon footprint is a big goal for you and you're not necessarily putting solar panels on your house right away and you want to know where your power is coming from simon actually introduced us to a new app called electricity maps which will show the carbon intensity of your geographic location so if you want to check it out you can check it out and play around there's some really cool information on there now i know that not everybody can afford to do a project like upgrade the hvac system within their home or maybe you're renting and your landlord's not going to upgrade the HVAC system because you're paying the bills and why would they upgrade it, right? Just an additional cost for them uh, and you're not necessarily gonna pay them more rent. Unless you wanna work a deal with, with your landlord like that, maybe they will actually want to support you and do that. Uh, but I also know that we need to do a lot more than just stop burning fossil fuels like in, in reality nature needs carbon right and there's a lot of videos out there uh, that explain uh, how everything works and how uh, the trees and the plants and the soil need carbon to survive so if you do want to have an impact and you want to help and you're not able to do it in the way that we're discussing on this video here a simple thing that you can do is eat organic that will support farmers that are not spraying chemicals all over their properties and destroying the soil that ultimately we need in order to capture that carbon right we want to capture carbon it's not just about reducing carbon the government is going to say reduce 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 and that's what they can control but in reality we need to also capture carbon we're part of a cycle and this is what i believe we need to do it's not just one thing that's going to solve everything for our children and our children's children we need to be looking at everything we need to look at the entire cycle and make sure we're doing our part to support that
Now the other part to this equation that I alluded to before was solar panels. For example, if you're going fossil fuel free and you're wanting to lower your carbon footprint, but you're on a dirty grid, you're not necessarily accomplishing that goal. You can accomplish that goal by adding solar panels. And once again, I know that not everybody can necessarily afford to put solar panels on their house right away, but if you're in the US, there's never been a better time to put solar panels on your house, even if you didn't do the other work yet, because of the incentives that are out there. I wish they had them in Canada, but they don't. It's only in the US right now. That's why we've teamed up with Apricot Solar and Freedom Forever to bring these to you. If you go to theconsciousbuilder.com solar, you can see what your home qualifies for. And if you think about it, in the US over the last 10 years, utilities have continued to rise about 20% on average per year. And the cost of solar has reduced by about 50% over the last 10 years. So like I said, there's never been a better time to go solar. This is your chance to add solar to your home, to take advantage of these incentives, to get some of that tax money back that you've been paying, working so hard and paying to the government for over the years. So see what your house qualifies for by going to theconsciousbuilder.com solar. The last thing I'll say on solar is that if you don't have the money up front to do it, don't worry. There are financing options where you can get it for no money down and still reduce your monthly bill. So you could actually be saving money right off the bat. Now, if you're not concerned about the money and you're more concerned about health and comfort, you're still in the right location. That's what we do on this channel. We focus on building and renovating healthy, comfortable and efficient homes because by default, you end up with an efficient home when you build a healthy and comfortable home. That is the most important thing that you can do, in my opinion, for the long run. It's the best long-term investment, in my opinion, in terms of not just money, but in terms of your health and well-being. A well-built home will last for years and you can pass it on to whoever you want after that and it'll continue to perform. There's no mechanical moving parts. If it's done properly, it will always work properly. Until next time, I'm Casey Gray and remember to live consciously.